Ed here with the Digital Digest, and today I wanted to share yet another update on my experience with the Asus Zephyrus G15. Now, for those of you that have missed my coverage of this gaming laptop, it is arguably one of the best here in 2021. In fact, arguably one of the best ever made because it combines a fantastic 15 and a half inch QHD 165 Hertz uh, refresh rate IPS panel with a brand new AMD Ryzen 9 5900HS and the NVIDIA RTX 3070. A combination that really does end up giving you one of the best overall experiences that you can buy, especially at its $1,800 US retail price point. But if you've been following my coverage, you know it is imperfect, but then again, nothing is. So 16 gigs of RAM, eight of which are soldered, which means dual channel support ends at 16 gigs, even if you decide to max out the chipset capability, uh, which is essentially throwing a 32 gig DIMM in the available uh, slot. You've got two NVMe uh, drive slots on this. So uh, it comes with a one terabyte drive that's good, but if I end up keeping it, I will absolutely upgrade it. Uh, I have a two terabyte uh, Sabrin Rocket uh, Plus, that is a Gen 4 drive, but it'll work here. It's backwards compatible. And really, things have been pretty stable. That's the good news. For those of you that are wondering, this update is positive. Um, no BSODs, for those of you unfamiliar, blue screens of death. Um, no hanging, no crashing, more gaming, more editing. And this machine continues to impress me. Build quality, as I've mentioned in previous videos, is solid. It's some sort of plastic combined with a little bit of metal here and there, but the overall feel of the machine is still quality. It does have quite the chin, even though it has very minimal bezel around its 15.6 inch, again, uh, QHD IPS panel. Uh, very minimal backlight bleed, although I've discussed other people have severe, and that's really a case-by-case -case basis like anything in life. Keyboard is great, even if there is no numerical pad, no webcam on this, uh, but solid microphones up there at the top of the display. And one thing that's really nice is that with this display, it does basically go completely flat, something you know, you're not going to get out of most machines on the market. So uh, I do like that. Uh, the keyboard, again, is really good once you are accustomed to it. Um, it is a, you know, a little bit loud, but with gaming laptops, that's generally the case. We do have RGB backlighting, uh, but it is not key specific uh, like the Aero 15 that I'm also uh, reviewing, trying to really decide which is right for me. So Basically, any game you throw at this machine, right now I have Battlefield 5 installed, I've got Cyberpunk, I've got GTA 5 installed, I've got Rust, Call of Duty World War II, um, I think I may have also installed Counter-Strike, but I haven't played it, I'm not really worried about that. Uh, it is able to play basically just about everything at ultra settings with its native QHD display which is fantastic. I mean, what more could you really ask? The only thing now, uh, besides the soldered RAM that disturbs me, is the audio issue. And for those of you that think uh, that it's a driver issue, I hope you're right. Uh, I'm up to date. Today is uh, the 27th of February on everything, uh, both per the uh, My Asus uh, app, as well as checking their website. There is nothing available uh, that I can update. I've played with all sorts of EQ uh, you know, with the actual Dolby uh, software to try to resolve this, but I cannot get rid of it. So essentially anything that's bass oriented ends up sounding like basically little farts. And I've mentioned this, it just crushes it and it's pff, pff, pff. And here's an example. Let's make sure I got volume all the way up. I'm gonna lean in since I am using a lav, but you'll still hear it. And here with it. And here with the digital digest. And today I wanted to. So that's really now my biggest problem with this machine is that, and that's not a terrible one, but at nearly after tax two grand, it's a lot of money to have bad speakers. Now, for those of you that are long-term subscribers, you already know. And by the way, I've played with every uh, different setting, and I can basically make it better, but I cannot eliminate what these speakers are doing to anything that has bass. I can lessen the problem, but I can't eliminate it. Now, 
Hopefully it's something that can be fixed, but I would not bet on it. And as I was just saying, for those of you that are long-term subscribers and have followed my laptop coverage, because I do cover a lot, not just gaming laptops, but Ultrabooks, another mainstay, uh, you know, I accepted the HP Spectre X360 13T last year. Uh, now it's really, it's 2019. Uh, it's not last year anymore, right? The pandemic swallowed quite a bit here. We're still in it. But the speakers on the 13T are pretty bad. I was willing to live with them because of the entire package overall being one of a kind. That may end up being the exact same perspective I end up with the G15. Now, I don't like to settle. I don't think any of you like to settle either, especially when spending $2,000. But the gaming performance, the CPU performance, and the display quality and battery life really are uh, not matched by anything that I'm aware of right now. And as much as I love the Aero 15, the Aero 15 is not perfect either. And if you're curious about what's going on with my experience with that, check out the update for the Aero 15, because on paper, the Aero 15 is a dream machine. Uh, but unfortunately, dreams are exactly that. Dreams, not reality. Uh, so, uh, I may be leaning back towards the G15 here more now, uh, because basically most of the issues that I've discussed so far that I've personally had, not the broad issues that I discussed in the quality control update, but the issues I specifically had, again, what I mentioned at the top of the video, the uh, blue screens of death, which I experienced multiple times, uh, video editing software crashing, uh, those things have been solid, have been sound. I have not run into those again so that just leaves me with the speakers. And uh, for those of you, again, wondering about, you know, turning, switching off uh, the auto mode on iGPU and putting it on so that essentially you pull the wattage from uh, the 3070 altogether, it does yield a little bit more battery life, um, but not enough to brag about. So basically in my use, and I mentioned this in my previous update, uh, I was able to end up getting I would say about 10% more battery life uh, with the iGPU set to on. Uh, so it is tangible, but is it a whole new world? No. Another update I want to talk to you about in this video, because again, it's a rolling update. I'm, I'm going the distance with this machine uh, because this is, again, for my personal use, uh, a workhorse I'm going to depend on for both work and play. Uh, and that's the beauty of this machine, the Type-C ports. Now, I already demonstrated that, and I have been using it with this adapter right here from Cable Matters. Um, I have no affiliation with them or Asus, for those of you that are wondering, uh, now you know. But this Type-C to HDMI 2.1 spec uh, works beautifully with my LG 48-inch CX so that I can game at 4K 120 hertz. Now, frames are limited, but... I can pretty much get around 30 frames in almost any title, which is completely playable. Yes, it reminds me of back, you know, in 2015 when I first started really gaming in 4K because that was what we were able to get with top-of-the-line desktop GPUs. Uh, but that's not a bad thing. That's kind of an, uh, an amazing thing if you think about it. Uh, another good thing about the Type-C ports is that even though this machine is lacking Thunderbolt 3, which is a pet peeve of mine, or 4, although there's really very little difference between the two, the throughput on the two Type-C ports is very solid. So that means when using my Sabrin NVMe drives like the 8TB Q or the 2TB Q or any of the Pro drives that are not Thunderbolt 3 specific, I do get, once I turn on write caching, a consistent I would say between seven and 800 megabytes a second. And that's very good considering, yes, Sabrent rates them at that, but a lot of Type-C ports just can't handle that throughput. So that's another thing I wanted to let all of you know. Uh, I would say outside of the speaker pop and the lack of Thunderbolt 3 and no full-size SD card reader, I'm happy enough with the micro. I, I've shifted to using micro in as many instances as I physically can. Uh, so not a big deal. Uh, I'm not going to love, if I do end up keeping it, uh, the fact that when I have it docked and hooked up to a monitor, which is going to be predominantly how this machine will live with me since we're in a pandemic after all. Uh, it doesn't mean it won't travel around the house, but I don't plan on going anywhere yet. Uh, I'm not in love with the fact that because I don't have the Thunderbolt, um, I'm going to have you know connections 
you know, wires coming out. There's not going to be any clean look. And it's not just about aesthetic, it's also about practicality. Uh, in an ideal world, you really just want to have the power connected so you can run in turbo mode, you know, which is, of course, not available off the power teat, so to speak. Um, and then, of course, just have a Thunderbolt, you know, connection for video out, uh, as well as all your peripherals with a Thunderbolt dock. Now, because I can't do that with this, that means I will need some sort of dongle, basically kryptonite in my world, so that I can expand upon the USB connectivity here to support a keyboard, to support a mouse, to support uh, external hard drive storage, because again, we've got two type C's and I'm going to need to use one of those to get the full potential of the video out because uh, to my knowledge, I haven't really messed with the HDMI, but the HDMI is going to use uh, the AMD uh, video out. It is not going to leverage the 3070, correct me if I'm wrong, which means it's kind of worthless if you plan on doing any gaming. Uh, you're going to want to use the Type-C DisplayPort 1.4 combo jacks. So, just something to be aware of. Uh, so, again, do I think this is arguably the best machine that 1800 plus tax in the U.S. can buy right now? Yeah. Do I think it has QC issues? Absolutely. My copy has the speaker problem. I'm hoping it gets fixed in software, but again, if you're on the fence right now and you're trying to figure out whether or not you can live with that, that's really up to you. Uh, these are in and out of stock, uh, only available through Best Buy, to my knowledge right now. Um, I can still recommend it. You will be hard pressed to find a more powerful machine for the money. Most laptops that have this sort of uh, CPU, GPU prowess, forget the display. Okay, forget about it completely, but just the CPU, GPU pairing and a one terabyte NVMe and 16 gigs of RAM, they're well over two grand. So you can see why people really like this machine. It's not because it's pretty. It's not because it's a looker. It isn't. It's just okay. But build quality and again, performance are where this machine thrives. And by the way, touchpad, trackpad, really do enjoy having it. It is larger than pretty much any other machine in its class. And it's just fluid, especially with that 165 hertz refresh rate that some of you may or may not see. But that's today's update. Um, I wanted to just give anyone who was wondering some level of comfort, make sure my brightness is all the way up, that this machine has been uh, growing on me. It's, it, I have not had any major uh, issues, nothing new, and that's a good sign. Uh, and that's basically where I left things last video, was that I'm go going to spend more time with it and game on it, video edit more on it in 4K, mind you, and just make sure that those bugs were maybe, you know, just bugs that were one-offs and wouldn't reoccur. And thus far, it looks that way. So right now, where we're left is that the speaker issue, that's something that I haven't been able to resolve. I can lessen it, but I can't fix it. Hopefully, Asus is listening, and they're going to. But that wraps it up. Um, battery life, like I called it in the comparison and the update, still really, realistically is about six hours with the iGPU on you're gonna get closer to seven to eight hours. That'll all depend on how bright you keep the display. Uh, people who are claiming 10 hours of use, I wanna know what they're doing because I can't get this thing to, to put out 10 hours. But the magical thing is again, how silent it is. That is one thing that this AMD NVIDIA marriage has brought battery life, performance, and then it is quiet and cool. And I have rarely seen any form of throttling at all. That's today's update. Hope you enjoyed the video. I know I didn't show a lot. My next one will likely be a full-on gaming demo where I take you through multiple titles uh, because this machine does really shine in that realm. And by the way, again, to people who say the screen is not bright enough, I totally disagree. I mean, could it always be brighter? Sure. Uh, but this is a, a laptop that has checks almost every box. In fact, for most of you, it probably checks more boxes than you have. For me, it's missing a few, but that doesn't mean it won't be my next machine. Any questions or comments, please feel free to post them, hit that like button, and as usual, please feel free to subscribe and please stay safe. Later.